Hi, my name is Stephanie Cook and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and couples therapist in Atlanta, Georgia. I own Counseling ATL, a small counseling practice in the Ponce Highlands neighborhood. Today, I'd like to continue to talk about how to be a great listener. Last time, I discussed the basics, but today I'd like to go a little further and share some advanced skills with you that can help you go above and beyond to be there for your partner. First of all, to be an even better listener, you've got to read between the lines. And what I mean by that is that you have to listen not only to what your partner is saying, but also to how your partner is saying things. So for example, sometimes we speak in more nuanced ways that aren't so direct. Sometimes people speak metaphorically with flowery language that isn't meant to be taken literally. Think poetry. Most people don't speak directly all the time. For example, maybe you had a rough day at work. Sometimes you might be direct and say to your partner, today I really struggled at work, honey. I felt stressed and anxious that my boss might fire me. Instead, on a different day, you might say more metaphorically, ugh, my boss will be the death of me, or kill me now before I have to spend another day in that hell. Sure, you could be afraid that your boss is going to literally kill you, in which case I hope that you run for safety and uh, take care of yourself. However, more likely than not, you don't mean that literally. You're trying to tell your partner in that situation just how stressed you've been feeling at work and that your boss is a big part of that stress. And if you're the person on the receiving end, hearing that your partner uh, is this stressed and is saying that, they're, that they feel like their boss is trying to kill them, they feel like this is death, you, know, you might just say to yourself, oh, they're just being dramatic. You could roll your eyes or ignore them or barely validate them by saying, oh, okay, yeah, sorry, that sucks. In which case, you're minimizing their feelings and you're missing an opportunity to be there for them. And if you miss enough of these cues and opportunities, your relationship will probably suffer and your partner probably won't feel heard or cared about. So my point is that you should tune into those less direct, more metaphorical ways that your partner may be talking to you. Use what they're saying as you reflect back what you hear. You need to show your partner that you're trying your best to understand what they're feeling. For example, if your partner said, again, ugh, my, my, boss, will, my boss will be the death of me, um, you might reflect back, wow, you know, that sounds like your boss is really stressing you out right now. Is that right? Am I getting it? And if your partner said, something else metaphorically like I'm feeling like every ship has sailed and I'm just waiting here watching everyone else sail off into the sunset you might reflect back so you feel like all these opportunities are passing you by and your own life is at a standstill is that right that must be a terrible feeling to have so you hear not just summary of what you think that they're saying but you're also hearing empathy, that you're picking up on the feelings that are underneath that metaphorical language. And if you can recall, some of those basic listening skills include not only empathy, but summarizing what the other person's saying and looking them in the eyes as you tell them what you think you heard. Uh, it also means um, not jumping to problem solve and not including your own opinion just yet. You're just trying to show them that you've heard and that you care. So the next time you're listening, I hope that you'll try to read between the lines and pick up on the more nuanced feelings and subtleties that your partner is trying to convey. This can result in a stronger bond, a closer connection, and a better relationship. 